Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So Sony smartphones have always differed from other smartphones on the market. And in the last couple of years, Sony's really found a niche with its Xperia 1 line of smartphones that basically tried to mimic the shooting experience of using a Sony Alpha camera. This includes a dedicated camera shutter button that you can press halfway to focus, rapid fire burst shooting mode, eyed autofocus that also works on animals, and a camera interface that looks very similar to the interface found in Sony Alpha cameras. I know because I own two Sony Alpha cameras. I'm shooting one right now, the Sony A7C, and I also have the Sony ZV-1. So this year's Xperia 1 Mark IV continues that trend with an improved camera system featuring a true optical telephoto zoom lens with a variable optical zoom range from 85 millimeter to 125 millimeter. The ability to record 4K video at 120 frames per second, a better selfie camera, but perhaps more importantly, Sony's also improved its computational photography for pulling off things like automatic HDR, which means the phone now has a wider appeal. Previous Xperia 1 smartphones were for serious photographers who knew how to tweak ISO and shutter speed to get the perfect shot. This year's Xperia 1 Mark IV can be for that group of serious photographers still, but also can now be used by casual smartphone users who like to just point and shoot because the auto mode is now smart enough. I'll cover the cameras more in depth in a bit. Let's first talk overall hardware because there's a lot to like here. So I said earlier, Sony smartphones always zig where others zag and you can tell that's the case with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. The phone is taller and longer than typical smartphones with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio screen that when turned sideways, it's ideal for consuming content because you're getting widescreen cinematic footage. And you'll want to do this often because the screen is absolutely brilliant. It's a 4K HDR 120Hz OLED panel. Now last year's Xperia 1 Mark III also offered a similar 4K 120Hz OLED panel, but this year's screen gets 50% brighter and you'll definitely see the difference when you're using the phone outside. Another area of the One Mark IV that's different from every other phone in the market is that there are noticeable bezels at the top and bottom of the screen. These bezels serve a few purposes. First, they allow Sony to use an uninterrupted display, no notch, no hole punch cutouts. Second, these bezels give you something to hold on to. Remember, this is a phone that is meant to be used sideways like this quite often. And third, the bezels afford enough room for a larger, fuller speaker grill that's actually front facing. So just by virtue of having two speakers of equal sizes facing me when I'm watching content, just makes audio sound more immersive. If you don't want to bother someone near you, just plug in your audio file headphones because the Xperia 1 Mark IV has a headphone jack. Yeah, this is probably the only flagship phone left in the world to have a headphone jack. Now while this 4K HDR 120Hz OLED screen is a little bit of a battery hog, Sony's addressed that by adding a larger battery inside this phone. It is now a 5000mAh cell compared to last year's 4500mAh cell. Despite the larger cell, Sony somehow kept the Mark IV basically the same dimensions as last year's Mark III, which means this is one of the lightest phones on the market at 185 grams. There's a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip inside with 12 gigs of RAM and either 256 or 512 gig of internal storage. And all the memory standards are the latest, obviously. Now I am a fan of this phone's particularly tall aspect ratio because this means the phone is narrower from left to right, which means the phone is easier for me to grip with one hand. Sony's software overlay on top of Android 12 is also minimal, so for the most part you get a clean Android experience. There are a few useful software additions like SideSense. This is a bar on the side of the screen that you can activate like a trigger. You can also open apps in a floating window, which I like a lot because it improves productivity and multitasking. So overall, the software experience is intuitive and easy to use. Okay, now let's talk the cameras, the main event. So the Xperia 1 Mark IV has a triple lens system covering the usual ultra-wide, wide, and telephoto focal lengths. But this last zoom lens is groundbreaking. It's a periscope zoom lens with a variable optical range between 85mm, or around 3.5 times zoom, and 125mm, or around 5.2 times zoom. Now last year's Mark III also had a similar zoom lens, but that lens only gave you optical zoom range at two zoom levels. This year, you're getting optical zoom at every point between 3.5 times to 5.2. So whether you're shooting at 100 millimeter, 85 millimeter, 120 millimeter, it is all optical zoom. So this effectively gives the Xperia 1 Mark IV the most versatile optical focal length range 
in any smartphone. An 85mm is an ideal focal length for portraits and I really like taking portraits with this lens. Look at the nice little bokeh that you get, that depth of field separation between background and subject when you shoot at this focal length. And just like the Xperia Pro I that came out a few months ago, this new Mark IV can shoot 4K 120fps footage at every single lens. That makes for really good 5 times slow motion video. Now while the Xperia Pro I has a 1 inch sensor so it has better light sensitivity, the Xperia 1 Mark IV has 3 true optical lens so you get a variety of angle and lens range when you shoot your 4K 120p videos. Now all the earlier special features that I mentioned such as eye autofocus also works on every single lens. So that's very useful. That means you don't just get eye autofocus with the main camera. Even when you're using telephoto zoom, you can still get eye autofocus to make sure your subject's in focus. That's very useful for me because in my neighborhood, there are a lot of street cats and dogs. And I always like to take pictures of them, but I don't want to get too close because, you know, if you get too close to the dog, the owners may, may not like it. And because for cats, they might run away if you get too close to them. So I usually like to stay a little bit further back, use the telephoto zoom lens, get up to like four times zoom and just snap a photo because this is an optical zoom and as I autofocus, I get really sharp photos of these cats and dogs every single time. And because this phone can shoot at rapid fire burst shooting mode at up to 20 frames per second, I can catch them in the act middle of a stretch. The rapid fire burst mode is so useful for shooting objects or subjects that won't stay still. And we're not just talking about cats and dogs here. I was using this over the weekend to shoot people playing basketball cyclists and it was just awesome to be able to get them in motion because i just have to press down on the shutter button and it'll grab 20 photos in one second so within those 20 shots for sure at least several of them if not all of them will be usable i can post on social media now i've been shooting with the xperia 1 mark 4 all around hong kong for the past week now and this is a very enjoyable camera experience all three cameras produce consistent colors and the main camera produce natural separation between subject and background for that nice creamy bokeh look. Now to take photos, jump into Photo Pro where you'll start out in basic mode. This is point and shoot. And because Sony now has improved computational photography, you don't really have to think in this mode, even if you're shooting against backlight, which traditional photographers would not do, but you can do that. And the phone will analyze the scene, produce a HDR image with everything well balanced. This is Sony's superior computational photography at play. So if you don't know anything about photography, just use this mode and you're good. But if you're serious about photography, if you use a Sony Alpha camera, you'll want to cycle over to the advanced mode. These shooting modes give you more finite control over things like ISO, shutter speed, focus points, etc. So I'm no professional photographer or videographer, but I enjoy using these modes to allow myself to get more creative for my shots. Maybe I want stronger shadows and contrast in one scene. I don't want everything to look perfectly balanced the way like a Google Pixel photo always looks like. I want a shot that has a specific vibe. I can just change the shutter speed a little bit, adjust ISO and get the shot that I like. So for videography, you can shoot videos directly in the Photo Pro app. But again, if you want more control, you will want to use the dedicated Video Pro app where you can pull off cinematic shots like rack focus. I haven't talked about the selfie camera much. That's because real photographers probably wouldn't care about taking selfies. But rest assured, Sony's improved the selfie camera too. You now have a 12 megapixel selfie camera with a faster aperture. So you get selfies that are more detailed and less noisy than the selfie camera seen in last year's Mark III. Now having a dedicated shutter button really improves the photography experience. I find myself now, like every day I'm out in Hong Kong, just taking out the phone and just holding it like this, almost like you know, trying to find a frame that I like just to grab a couple of shots. You know, you have a tactile feedback with the button. It feels like you're actually snapping photos instead of just tapping a digital on-screen button. So last year, a lot of people, including myself, called the Xperia 1 Mark III a phone for enthusiasts or for people who own Sony Alpha cameras. Now, this year's Mark IV will definitely still appeal to that group of people, but with longer battery life, a brighter and better display, smarter camera software for just point and shoot, intuitive software, and a never before seen zoom lens. The Xperia 1 Mark IV is just a really polished, well-rounded flagship smartphone. It is not just a phone for camera enthusiasts. It is a do-it-all powerhouse flagship. So the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV will go on sale pretty soon. I don't have official pricing of this phone yet. So I suggest you check Sony's website or go to your local Sony store to check it out. 
when I have pricing, I will put it in the description below. So that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care.